Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Former Goldman Sachs executive Raoul Paul has stated in a new write-up that he thinks XRP is setting up to be a really good trade. Well, how about this? This is rather fascinating. Um, I, I've, um, I've been following Raoul Paul more closely over the last several months, and I, um, I've been watching more stuff on his website, Real Vision, put a lot of really good content and he's always just struck me as somebody that is intellectually honest and a, and a genuinely curious person he's outside of the uh, the, the echo chamber of bitcoin maxi trolls he's definitely not a maximalist of any sort of cryptocurrency um and so he he's certainly well versed in crypto but um that's part of the reason i also kind of found it fascinating that until recently he really didn't know anything about ripple and xrp and so he just didn't have any opinions he didn't say it was bad or this or that like the bitcoin maxi trolls he just acknowledged hey i don't know and he was curious and he wanted to learn and so uh he ended up having a video um i guess it's probably early december on uh, on his, his real version website and i think it ended up making it to youtube also and uh, it was interesting. He had Santiago Velez on, who is just an incredibly sharp mind. That was the first um, exposure I had to him. And uh, he was just pretty well crushing it on his take on XRP. And all of that good information made it to Raul Paul. And so you had um, this article. This one's from November 30th. Uh, former Goldman Sachs exec Raul Paul has 98% of his net worth in crypto. And so that's that's what he's well-versed on. That's That's his biggest bet. But uh, that's, that's not to say he's not interested in XRP or other cryptocurrencies. And in fact, to this point, uh, and he's been wildly successful, by the way, mind you, a real sharp guy uh, with a strong financial background. Um, he's expressed interest in XRP, which I'm briefly going to hi highlight. Hadn't heard anything on it uh, additionally in probably close to a month. And then we got this new write-up and now I'm thinking if I, had to, if I had to guess for fun, I bet he purchased XRP. I, I, I seriously, I bet he did. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he didn't. And I always said, too, like, even after he finishes his research, because he expressed interest in it, like, even if he doesn't, that's fine. It's not like I'm going to have a lower opinion if he decided, now this isn't for me. It's okay, whatever. Ever, you know, different people can have different opinions. Like, I don't need people to agree with me to be friends with me. Like, that's just not how I operate in life. Uh, I just like that he's intellectually honest. I, I really do believe that he is, which is kind of a rarity in the world of crypto. And so it deserves to be highlighted when you find it. Now, this piece is from Crypto Gazette, and it highlights a couple comments from him that I wanted to share. And I, I believe these were all from, yeah, they, I think they were all from, tw no, 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 the first one's from Twitter. The next was from an interview, I think. It might have been with Anthony Pompliano, I'm not sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But he, he tweeted out the following uh, towards the tail end of uh, November, I, be I believe it was to last year. He wrote, I'm warming to XRP. To be honest, I now have a basic understanding. I don't own it. All right, and then he was getting interviewed, and again, I, I think this was, am I right? Yeah, it was Anthony Pompliano. There you go. And here's a quote when he was speaking with Anthony Pompliano. And he, he said Ripple when he met XRP, but that's all right. He's still learning. <laughs> it's, um, I don't own Ripple. I'm not getting into that fight. But let's assume I think it has a 10% chance of becoming something much bigger, but the whole market is giving it half a percent chance. That misalignment in risk-reward is a huge opportunity. That's what we do in financial markets. We have to remain open. And he said a little bit more on it, but that's kind of the gist of it. And then he cited that he was actually legitimately, and um, I don't have a, th that, the comment I'm citing now, I don't have it directly in front of me, but he absolutely was um, it had expressed interest in perhaps uh, investing in XRP. And he said that, I don't know, several weeks or so ago, I highlighted it on the channel when it happened, when he made the comment, and I hadn't heard anything since. Well, until today, anyway, when I came across uh, this piece, which uh, he shared on a, via a tweet, and it's a, it's a PDF that's on his uh, Real Vision website, and it's lengthy, well thought out. I skimmed through most of it, and the part that I'm covering I read in full, and this is the part I want to share with you that has to do with XRP. First, we have to go through this so to make sure you understand what he's talking about, because he talks about XRP's S-curve. And so he has this little section about what an S-curve is. And for those of you that are not driving, feel free to take a look at, at the screen because he's got a little graphic here, a little chart. Although if you are driving, you keep your hands on the wheel at 10 and 2, motorist, lest you become crashed into an animal like a fish. Ain't nobody got time for that. But here's the S-curve. And he writes, The risk is that the protocol you choose fails to gain traction or loses the traction it has. This is known in startup world as the S-curve. Almost all products 
and businesses work along the line of the S curve. And so you can see you're talking the, um, the, this line here. It's representing growth over, a, and then this is you know it's over a span of time. And so what happens is it'll start to pump up, basically, you know, replicating and improving. And it gets this point where either it's really going to take off or it's really going to die. And so that's what the chart is representing. In case you can't look. Anyway, his piece continues. At various early points, there is the risk of a project dying. Most startups fail. They probably follow Pareto's law in that 80% of them fail. Once you get past the initial traction phase, it's usually execution risk or regulatory risk that kills the business or network. MySpace is an example of execution risk. The Silk Road is an example of regulatory risk. These S-curve turning points tend to be high drama. Bitcoin had its Mt. Gox moment, its Silk Road moment, its Forky moment, its China ban moment, and its regulation moment. It probably has its tether risk moment to come and maybe more regulation. These all form part of Bitcoin's S-curve, and each time these hurdles are overcome, the network value increases. Bitcoin is not free of risk, but, as with all networks, if they survive existential risks, they thrive. That is the S-curve. Uh, and so then he gets to this section, and uh, it's titled the XRP S-curve moment. And how about this? So this was super interesting to me because this is the first I'd seen him have anything to say about XRP in a, you know, probably the better part of a month. And I was like, okay, so where are you going? And, and, and as I go through this, I think you'll see why I'm suspect. If I just made a four fun guess, I'd be willing to bet that he ultimately did invest in XRP. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he didn't. It's just a four fun guess. But I think you'll see why I'm supposing that may be the case. And he wrote the following. XRP is the long established cryptocurrency most hated by the maximalists. It is being used as an extremely fast settlement protocol by banks, wire transfer houses, and many other financial institutions. It is hated because it has different attributes to Bitcoin and how it is used, the fact that all the coins were pre-mined, how it was marketed, how it began is centralized, etc. All very alien to the Bitcoin world. And then again, in parentheses, he writes, again, none of these ecosystems are the same, and that is a feature, not a bug. Uh, most startups have a messy history and, in this space, almost every asset and player does. It's just a feature of the crypto world being as it was. Initially, totally unregulated. Right now, XRP is going through its existential S-curve moment as the SEC are taking the founders to court on a number of potentially serious breaches of securities law. Now check this out. He's uh, he, he he's betting that it's going to go the way I'm betting it's going to go. And check this out. If they rule that XRP remains a security to this day, which is almost impossible to rule, then it makes it almost impossible to uh, to uh, XRPs to survive. Uh, but uh, it, but not totally impossible. It can survive outside the U.S. If on the other hand the SEC rules that it was a security. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, I just lost my thought. If, if on the other hand, the SEC rules that it was a security when they launched it, as it was concentrated in a few hands, um, as all cryptos tended to be on start, but is now not a security, then there will be some big fines and XRP will have been given the regulatory green light and can accelerate along the next S curve. There is, uh, and so again, I, before I even go further, look at what he's, look at what he said here, right? Um, you know, he doesn't think that XRP is going to be ruled a security today, but is acknowledging what most thoughtful minds that are not tribal recognize, which is that Ripple may end up having to pay some sort of fine based on the SEC basically retroactively going back and being like, you should have known better, da, 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 da. even though Ripple had been transparent and letting the SEC know everything they were doing. Just like, but anyway, Rob, Rob Paul seems to have a similar outlook. Anyway, he continues here, though. There is obviously a uh, there's obviously a lot more complexity than this summary, and I will write an entire article on it in due course because from a risk reward perspective, it is setting up to be a really good trade. Well, how about that? I especially like it because so many participants in the crypto market think everything about it is a scam and refuse to touch it. That makes me interested. When everyone hates something, there is often a good risk reward if they are wrong. 
The amazing thing is that this will be soon answered by the courts for once and for all. If it's deemed a security, trading will move outside the U.S. and XRP will still have some value. But if the ruling goes how I think it will, this thing will explode in adoption from the global banking system. Well, how about that? It looks to me like Rao Paul has done his research and deemed this perhaps a worthy risk. And so maybe we'll find out in the future he'll announce whether or not he, he purchased XRP. But, man, he took the time to write this all up. He clearly has a much better understanding than he uh, did at the beginning of December. Because, at, again, at the beginning of December, he was forthright. He said, look, I really don't know anything about Ripple or XRP. Educate me. He was just like a curious individual, which is the right way to approach anything in life, really. Don't form an opinion until you've educated yourself. And he's an adult taking the correct approach. So to his credit. And I would say that even if he ended up saying, no, I don't like XRP and Ripple for, you know, X, X number of reasons, I'd say, okay, fine. Thoughtful minds can disagree. That's perfectly fine. But I don't think that's where he's going. It looks to me like he's very interested after having looked into this. And so, um, and so he said the following. The chart is getting very close to a perfect entry. And he's got this on the screen here. Uh, so it's got XRP and then BG and currency, whichever fiat currency that is, I guess. I don't think that's, or that's not a crypto, is it, right? That's got to be, whatever. I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter. You can see the chart. Uh, he writes, uh, the chart is getting very close to a perfect entry. It is potentially forming a large rounded bottom. Anyway, my point being that investing in other decent-sized protocols or alts is similar to investing in medium-sized tech business. It's a pretty normal and quantifiable risk. There are even special situation opportunities like XRP that we are using to trade, uh, used to trading in macro. And he went on to talk also about just crypto risk in general, and he said one thing that I would like to highlight, which I've been saying on my channel for for quite a bit, um, if I can find the quote here, I'll even just read it to you. Um, it had to do with small cap coins. Yeah, here we go. Uh, no surprise for seasoned macro investors, riskier things have higher volatility. But when money is flowing into the space, the higher risk, lower liquidity assets massively outperform. So there you go. So effectively, can I, I translate that for you? Lower cap coins with almost no money in them are going to outperform medium and large cap coins like, like XRP in terms of uh, percentage gains over the market cycle, but they're way more risky. It's so like the small cap coins, I'm not, I personally am not interested in touching. But if you happen to pick a winner because there's so little money, it's easy to get this multiplier effect. If, there, if like say there's $20 in some sort of S-word coin that nobody wants, at least right now anyway, um, even if it even if it doesn't have long-term viability, right now there's like 20 bucks in it, like literally. To double that, somebody just has to put in $20. Whereas to double the market cap of XRP, whatever it is right now, 12 or 13 billion, I'm guessing I didn't look before recording this, think about how much money has to flow in. But but that's why it's still interesting. Even with a large cap coin today in 2021, they're still supremely illiquid compared to like pick an asset class. I mean, think about gold on its own with a market cap of, I don't know what it is today, nine trillion or 10 trillion, whatever the hell it is. It's a lot more than 12 or 13 billion. That's still not particularly liquid, even though it's XRP is among the most liquid cryptocurrencies on the planet. That's like nothing, you know? And it just goes to show you how nascent this asset class is. So lots of opportunity out there. And if indeed XRP uh, ends up doing what we think it's going to do. And if there's sufficient regulatory clarity and all this, and a you know, settlement with, imagine there's a settlement between Ripple and the SEC, whew, I think it's going to get bonkers in a really fun way. But I'll wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say all right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.